and I'm Chris Callen with Cycle Source Magazine. Grease and Gears TV, Grease and Gears Garage. We also do a program every Sunday, Shop Talk, that you can tune in through YouTube and through Facebook, many different social media channels. But one of our proudest things is recreating the garage atmosphere where we sit around like a lot of us do through the winter months with a wood burner going, your buddies stop by and you talk about, hey, what do you think about this, the latest that, some new part that was there. That's how the rest of this show is going to be. We're just going to have a, a conversation here. I'm, I'm humbled by the guys that we have with us. And the topic today is, is what is a hamster? Now, over the years of, of my life, you know, 25 years doing Cycle Source magazine, many, many years before that, sneaking mag Easy Rider magazines out from underneath the, the bed to take a sneak at, at what was in those pages back in the day. But you start to develop an appreciation for the names of the industry. You see over and over again, you see names like Arlen Ness and Donnie Smith and Dave Perowitz, and you see these names commonly coming up with the latest and greatest custom motorcycles. And as you spend more time, you start to learn more about them, was my experience to how I eventually got to know the answer to the question, what is a hamster? But in, in all truth, I'm not even going to try to take the position of delivering this information to you. We have the benefit of, of two members of the group here with us, and we're just going to go through this together. So if you can put your hands together, please welcome Mr. Dave Pirowitz. <laughs> Now, for Dave, I probably don't even need to do any kind of introduction, but for me, Dave has always been one of my heroes because you know, he was he was making it happen, and he was making it happen for so many people. Coined the phrase, the look, the, the master of the flames, you know. Dave was involved when this thing was just in its baby stages of becoming something. What custom motorcycle, what, what we've enjoyed for most of our adult lives, him and a couple guys literally put the first few blocks down to make that happen. So... I can't say enough about this gentleman. You can read volumes from books to stuff online to documentaries that he's been involved in. We're very, very proud to have you here with us today, Dave. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, <laughs> well, there's many stories going on about the hamsters. Um, the real deal is uh, in 1978, myself and uh, Alan Ness, uh, Donnie Smith, Barry Cooney, Ed Kerr, uh, we all met in Daytona. Uh, we had all met, uh, actually, I met Alan and Donnie and Ed in 1975 at a show in Detroit. So we were running into each other at, at events, but we all planned on getting together in, in Daytona in 78. And so we were out riding our bikes. You know, it was like you were on your bike, you know, all day, every day, and every night. And so one night we all went out, and uh, my best friend was a guy named Jim Leahy. And we all went back to the room after we ate. We all took a little nap. Then we got on our bikes and left. Well, Jimmy didn't want to get up. And so we left. We came back in about 2 in the morning. And there's paper plates on all our doors <laughs> that, that said hamsters. Uh, and it was hamsters, East Coast president, Midwest president, West Coast president. And so we all had a big laugh over it. Jimmy was pissed because we left him there. Um, and, and, you know, we joked about it for the next few days while we were in Daytona. Well, we went to Sturgis that year in 78. Donnie Smith made up T-shirts, Hamsters MC. And we did them in yellow because we wanted to be the opposite of the guys who wear black t-shirts. <laughs> so anyways, we laughed about it. We gave out t-shirts in the, for the next few years at, you know, at our uh, Sturgis events. And then actually, and, and what it amounted to was a great group of guys that were all friends. And the common thread was custom bikes. We were all custom bike guys. 
We weren't all custom bike builders, but we were guys that loved custom bikes. Uh, at that time, most of us were builders. But to speed things up over the years, it got more and it got to be more and more people involved. And then it got to the point where there was, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 members. And we decided maybe we should, you know, we were always a club with, no, well, we didn't want to, we changed the MC and, and we don't refer to the hamsters as a club anymore. We're a group. Um, and, and so we were a group of motorcycle guys with no rules. <laughs> but then as we got bigger, we had to put some rules in place. And I mean, they were very loose. Um, and so we started kind of tightening things up and more and more people wanted to be involved in the group. And then, you know, as years went by, we had to kind of step things up. Um, you know, one big myth is you don't have to be a millionaire. You know, a lot of people think, oh yeah, those guys are all millionaires. They're not, believe me. I mean, we do have some wealthy guys in the group, no question about it, like Keith here, right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, while, while we're on that subject, let me do a real quick introduction here too, because Mr. Keith Terry, uh, no slouch in the in the conversation about the foundation of the industry, known for his, his work with his company, Terry Components, was one of the first products to market with a, uh, a, a module to affect the, the um, tuning when the fuel injection motorcycles were all over the place and people were trying to figure out, okay, I put some pipes on my bike, I'm, I'm changing some stuff about my bike, now what? Because the factory tune is not doing it. His um, terminal velocity module get cornered to market on all that stuff. He was also first to market with high torque starters, you know, a lot of great work in that company. But even beyond that, vice president of the Sturgis Museum and sits on the board with the Hall of Fame, does a lot of great work with that. Keith is, is tireless in his efforts to point out the people among us. And if you if you talk about the significance of that, we say this all the time that for for the dirty biker side of things, like the AMA has a hall. Hall of Fame, and that's great because all the, the pretty little race guys, they're going to have a spot to go in someday. But for our side of the culture, the Sturgis Museum, if we have a prayer of, of memorializing the people that have lived our life, that's where it's going to happen. And, you know, from on behalf of everybody here, thank you for the work that you guys are doing with that. But please give them a round of applause for welcome. Thank you very much. You know, like Dave says, you know, he, uh, I was brought in 1995, uh, so I'm working on my 28th year of being a hamster. But I, I looked up to all these guys building custom bikes, and uh, I went into building parts. So he can build the custom bikes. Right, right. And so uh, we both played our roles, and so many of the guys that are right out here right now all do the same thing. We found some niche that worked for us, and um, we were able to provide these parts for uh, any of the bike builders that was able to, um, you know, keep wanting to build something new and. Um, in my in my role, I just tried to figure out how to start them, and uh, you know that was uh, hard enough. Everybody wanted to build the motors bigger and have all these uh, components that made starting of a uh, of a motor custom motorcycle difficult. Uh, that's where I came in. And Dave, Dave's from the East Coast. And I grew up in Los Angeles, so we were worlds apart. And uh, back to the hamsters, we had, Dave had the fall forage run and all, all kinds of runs on the East Coast. It was difficult for maybe West Coast guys to come out and meet Dave and get uh, him to get to know. You know, I want to wear a shirt like you guys, but you don't, you don't know us. And and so out on the West Coast. 
We have the uh, Del Mar run. We have the uh, River. I mean the uh, Redwood run yeah. and Wolf run. We had uh, we had the Wine run, the um, the Love Ride. We had all these things going on, and that's where Dave and Donnie would all come out all the time and give guys like us on the West Coast an opportunity to to meet them, and they got to know us. Uh, RMS was in the uh, Northern California. Uh, I was in Southern California, but we had a lot of food hub for custom motorcycles, along with Donnie in uh, Minneapolis and yeah. Dave in Boston. We had all these hubs, and we had so much stuff going on that we were able to actually see each other quite often. I think that's one of the most important things to talk about here too, when people are trying to understand what it is that you guys do, because I want to remind you, like contrary to what Dave said about the Millionaires Club, when you're talking about when these guys were first showing up to the Detroit show, and I've been lucky enough to share some of these stories. They were showing up, they were broke-ass chopper kids with one bike in the back of a van, hoping that somebody was going to see something that they did and make a buck from it, you know? So what they actually created in this, like most of us who grew up around motorcycling, it's a community, you know, just something, a little extra help that you can say, hey, I know a guy, there's a guy down the street from you, there's a guy over here that has something, you know? And I've had the benefit of hanging out a lot with you guys for the last year, and I, that's the thing I'm most impressed with. I'm most impressed with how you take care of each other. It's incredible. Well, you know, you're right, Chris. Back in the day, when uh, when the Hamsters first started, you know, there was no rich guys. You know, um, we were all just uh, young young guys that were uh, that loved custom motorcycles, and uh, and of course, Alan Ness was. He was my mentor, truly. You know, from the time we met, he helped me along. When I opened my first store in 1976, uh, Alan sent me a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff to put in my store. He says, here, I'm sending you a couple thousand dollars worth of, you know, front sections and springers and all that stuff. He says, when you sell it, just pay me. You know, but uh, the Hamsters is a great group of guys that uh, everybody's pretty much willing to help out each other. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, throughout the years, we started doing charity stuff. And the charity stuff that we started out, we started the fall foliage run in 93. And after a couple of years, we decided, you know what, let's, let's raise some money. And, and let's, you know, give it to uh, the Children's Hospital in Boston. That's what we did. And the first year we raised like 2,000 bucks. And, you know, that was a pretty cool deal, raising two grand, you know. Uh, and, and then as it progressed uh, into the early to mid-2000s, the fall foliage run, which was an invitation-only uh, run that we put on that went to Cape Cod, and it was just a, a three-day deal, and guys from all over the country flew in to, to do the run with us, hamsters. And um, we had as many as 250 people that came to the run back in 2002 to 2010, we'll say. And uh, we were making, in one night, we were doing 50, 60,000. We took the check and drove into Boston and handed it to the doctors at the hospital, at the children's hospital. And then of course, Sturgis, we do our annual, our big meeting of the year is in Sturgis. We do a banquet on Monday night. Again, it's an invitation only banquet for 700 people. All the industry leaders are there. Pretty much everybody in the industry uh, is there. And we, uh, we, we do an auction there. Uh, we do a silent auction and a small live auction, and we make, for the last 10 years, we do an average of uh, anywhere from three to 500,000 in that one night. Yeah, no, this is, this is the important part. I mean, these guys are getting together to celebrate the culture of motorcycles. You've heard the, the foundation of where all that starts with is guys cruising around trying to figure out how even to stay in the game. 
have become now the leaders of the industry and, and the, the thing that they're most proud of is the thing that they're giving back to. That place, that mecca of motorcycles, Sturgis, they've made the place where they all got together, they've made that as much their home that they've taken the, the local children's organization, their lifescapes, and they've made that their primary recipient for the, the money that he's talking about there and, and changed a lot, a lot of lives. I've been to these banquets. How do we You know, the, the funny thing about that is um, a lot of the things that are auctioned off that night in that room are all made by some of the talented hamsters that are out here right now. Uh, goes home into the shop that the welder you know, was talking about. Do we don't know what they're going to make, some kind of lamp or some kind of uh, uh, some weird folding chair or anything that we don't know. It doesn't matter as long as it's yellow. Um, it would end up going uh, from one side of the room all the way around the room. And uh, in two hours, the very same hamsters that made all this stuff turn right back around and buy it right back. And all these different things. And in two hours, like Dave says, we generate the amount of money that stays in the Black Hills. You know, um, Ed Kerr uh, from Pennsylvania, who's one of the original guys, Ed, a couple years, two years ago, Ed... Uh, decided that uh, he wanted to pursue helping Meals on Wheels uh, for the elderly in South Dakota, in Spearfish, South Dakota, where we stay. And he did some research, and in the whole town of Sturgis, uh, no, of Spearfish, they only had a $6,000 budget to feed all the elderly for the whole year. So that first year, which was last year, we gave them in, in, in about 10 minutes, we raised $14,000 to give to Meals on Wheels. And buddy, that's real change. And I'll tell you what, I'm not just saying this because Ed's, Ed's my guy from Pennsylvania, but the, the admiration that comes in from there, because as a motorcycle community, you guys have heard the, the media talk about how, you know, uh, an aging demographic, it, it's, it's true. I mean, a lot of these guys, they were young men in the 70s, but Ed's, Ed's philosophy behind that is because, you know, we're all getting older, you know? And, and I've had personal experience, especially from being southwestern Pennsylvania, Steel Town, Wheels on Wheels is a very solid thing that elderly people have to rely on, you know, so that's, that's fantastic, but it doesn't even stop there with you guys, you know what I mean, like, every single thing that happens around the country has a charity component in it, or, or God forbid something happens to another one of the members in the group, you guys spring into action immediately. Yeah, well, you know, and then the museum, too, the museum, Keith and I talked, and the museum in Sturgis, um, is is run on pretty much donations. Um, and so last year, I kind of brought it up that we should make some money for the museum. And uh, I think this year and last year, we, we did about, what, 45,000? With Dave taking the lead position and uh, putting a similar uh, silent auction together and a live auction uh, during our induction uh, dinner. Actually, in the last three years, Dave has generated $175,000 that went to the Sturgis Museum and Hall of Fame. I mean, see you had in the event on each of It's so fun to see it because um, Dave, of course, he knows everybody in the audience. It's all hamsters. So he's, he's well, these guys are just... Oh, he's a master. You know, <laughs> and it is funny to watch it because 
there will be a trash can <laughs> that Dave will paint some flames on it that'll go for four thousand dollars. I mean, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is great. You know, um, I love the, the, the live auction, and you know, I just can't help but cracking up because it gets so out of hand. You know these guys start competing against each other and you know it gets to the point where they don't even care how much they're spending for a, a flame trash can they just want to win it you know well and here's the thing man like not to take anything away from the charity work because it's all killer but the, the thing i have the most respect about is you guys have one principle and it's custom motorcycles so anybody that knows anything about this group and some of the some of the biggest names in the industry wear the same color shirt and there's a reason why it's that that common thread of the passion for custom motorcycles and it leads them to be defensive of it when it comes to government interaction inventive when it comes to manufacturing you know they're always pushing the envelope and that starts and ends here in the United States well not here in the United States in the United States it starts and ends because this custom motorcycle culture that's born out of the post-war hot rod culture we we own this you know what I mean like whatever they do all around the rest of the world with engineering prowess and everything else that custom hot rod culture is ours and these guys had enough foresight in the beginning to see that coming up you know that you were you were making a collective to ensure that it was always going to be there you're right right and and you know getting back to the questions about the hamsters you know uh you know people always ask well what do i got to do to be in the hamsters well i'll tell you what you got to do first of all you got to have a custom bike and you got to be a custom bike enthusiast basically you got to love custom bikes and you got to come around and let and get to know everybody get to know everybody in the group i mean i'm not saying everybody but basically and to be sponsored to be a hamster you have to be sponsored by a guy uh, another hamster that's from your state and then being sponsored means in sturgis you got to come to our sunday morning meeting and you have to go in front of the board and just go around and introduce yourself to all the board members because a lot of times the guys don't know everybody on the board most of the time they don't and uh and then it's like hey just hang in there usually uh, you know you go on a list and usually it takes a couple of years uh of coming around you have to you know go to some events you know you have to show your face uh, get to know people so they get to know you. Then we put new members in once a year in Sturgis uh, at our banquet. Let's talk about that for a minute for people who have never experienced this. If you've been to Sturgis and you haven't been to this banquet, you can only get there by another member taking you as a guest. But the, the ceremony where they hand out the t-shirts for new members, it is the very last thing they do. The tables are cleared. The, the auction's over. It's, it's like, look, we're throwing all you out in two minutes. And by the way, here's the new member. So you got, you have a group of guys that are sitting there the whole, the whole night just going. And nobody knows. I mean, no, none of the rest of the members know who's getting it, who's not. So they're literally waiting to hear their name called out. And they just erupt in giant celebration when somebody, you know, from this part of the country who's sitting over here together at this part of the country. That's it's amazing. An amazing ceremony that you guys do yeah it, it is amazing i mean you're, you're looking at grown men that are you know jumping up and down and, and hugging each other and and uh yeah it, it's a it's a pretty cool deal i know i know for me um uh, and los angeles being a, a big hub of motorcycles i hung around the hamsters for like six years and just uh, wanted to be around. Uh, they would go on the rides. I was asked to go. And it got to a point where everybody thought I was a hamster. So I, uh, they said, well, why don't, how would you like to be in the, in the group? And I'll tell you what, um, just what Dave said, when they, uh, you have no idea who's going to be brought in. Dave does that himself. 
He calls off the East Coast. He calls off the West Coast. Oh, it's the West Coast, man. I'm in the West Coast. Yeah. And you're sitting there, and and when you when you hear your name called, and one minute you're on one side of the fence, and the next minute. You're a hamster. We're all proud to be a hamster. We're all proud to be part of the motorcycle group. We all are uh, very proud to know each other, and we go to extremes to be around each other. And we'll go to the East Coast, and we'll fly to the West Coast, and we'll, we'll do just about anything we can to see each other. We saw each other two months ago, but that's okay. We're going to do it all over again. Oh, yeah. And, and that's really because of Mr. Perowitz right here. He, well, me, me and the other guy. The other you, know, guys. you know, it's it's amazing how we started this this whole thing it was just a joke and you know no one ever ever could have imagined that it would turn out like it did well and that's coming from a, even even a little bit later and when you said the 30 members to now how many how many members three over three three 350 350 yeah give or take and and again you know i mean these are these are the things of legends not even just because of the individual guys which a bunch of them are but think about like the david mann painting of the hamsters flying through the universe that represents that ride into Sturgis. And literally, people in Sturgis set up lawn chairs to watch these guys ride in because they know they're going to come with the, the greatest custom motorcycles that there's ever been from yesterday and today. You know, I've been, uh, I've been in literally hundreds of magazines. Um, I've actually been on hundreds of covers. But uh, the, the best one... That, that I've ever been in was uh, an Easy Rider centerfold that Dave Mann did, and he put me in there yep. with a hamster shirt. <laughs> yes, sir. Listen, please put your hands together for both of these gentlemen. Dave and Keith are going to be on the ship through the rest of the week. I'm sure both of them will be happy to talk to you. There's there's plenty of time left to, to get to know more about them, but it was my extreme honor today to be able to tell part of this story. I hope we did some good out of it. I would love to do more of this stuff with you guys because, you know, it's just, it's it's an extraordinary part of who we are, so thank you. Uh, well, thanks, Chris. We appreciate it, and you know, it's, there's always a million questions, so hopefully that answered a lot of questions today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One more time. Put your hands together.